Joining us on the phone, the Birdman himself, Jay Walker. Jay, good morning, sir. It's been an eventful week for you. Um, how is it, how are you taking all of this in, from the championship to the news of Mike Desermo being appointed as head coach? I, how have the last 24 to 48 hours been for you? Busy. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, it's been nuts. Um, but it's, but it's good nuts. I think, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, first of all, you know, the Cajuns went out and they took care of their business before over 31,000 fans, um, uh, at, uh, at Cajun field on Saturday. Uh, it was a, a wonderful celebration. It was, it was a very, very special time. Um, and then, you know, one o'clock the next afternoon, you know, we get word that the Cajuns have uh, identified the the next person to lead this football program, and they didn't have to look very far. Um, and, you know, now he'll be, uh, I think, tomorrow he'll be formally introduced. But uh, I've known Mike Desermo since he uh, first got on campus back in the fall of uh, 2004. And uh, I think that they have uh, they've hired um, – a very, a very good man. And I think a very good football coach. Um, the players love him and, uh, and they're, they're going to go out and bust their butt for that man. And you brought up something I wanted to get to. You've known him forever and a day. And for people who don't know Mike Desermo, for people who haven't followed his career, they may be thinking, why him? He's not a splash hire. He's not a big name. But when you think of his ties to the community and the university, as well as his rapport with the players, current and future because he is one of the top recruiters for the program this pick made sense it might have it very well could be the best move for the rage and cajuns and dr maggard hasn't gone wrong yet in his appointments uh, for head coaching positions at ul you and i had this conversation privately last week this was a unique coaching search for the cajuns because they weren't looking to fix anything you know every time that you've looked for a football coach in the past it's been broken. And uh, so you had to get, bring somebody in that would fix it. And that's what they did with Billy Napier. Well, it's not broken. I mean, the, the team has won uh, 12 straight games. You're in the top 25 for the second straight year. Um, and and you, you've got a program that's uh, in pretty good shape. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to go out and hire somebody – who's going to come in, fire the whole staff, bring in a bunch of guys, and you don't know if it's going to work or not? Or are you going to go ahead and and hire someone who will continue the growth of the culture? Mm -hmm. I think it was a pretty easy decision for Brian Maggard to make. Now, he'll tell you it was a tough decision, um, and, and who knows, maybe it was. But I think this was a time when... If you have it, if you've been successful and you have an opening, the first place you look is within to see if you have someone who could step in and do the job. And he felt Mike Desermo could, and that's the decision that he made. And I think it was the right one. Yep, yep. Hey, Jay, Mark here. Go Cajuns. So, how about this? Talk about this a little bit. The Cajuns at twelve and one has never happened before, and our last victory on Saturday over App State. They beat a very good football team twice in one year. That's hard to do. So they carry quite a bit of momentum into that New Orleans Bowl against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Yes. um, They defeated App State for the second time. And look, neither one was a fluke, okay? The Cajuns were the better football team in both of those games. You're right. They've won 12 in a row. (laughs) Think about this. In four years – the Cajuns have won 40 football games. Now, that's pretty crazy for me to absorb when you consider that I was around when, when it took them five years to win nine games. Hmm. Um, this program is in great shape, uh, and, uh, you know, it, they do have a lot of momentum. If, they, um, if they're successful down in New Orleans, they will have the longest winning streak in college football uh, unless Cincinnati wins the national championship. Yeah. So uh, let's let's put it all in perspective. This is a good football program now, a very good football program. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And and Coach Desermo is a big big word here. Continuity. They they know him. He knows them. And uh, they they say he's quite the motivator. So 
Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to the New Orleans Bowl. I think it's going to uh, – because Marshall is a good team. I think it's going to be a heck of a game. It's got a chance to be, certainly. Um, you know, Mike, you know, Brian Maggard made it very, very clear what he was looking for um, when he announced that they would be doing a coaching search. And Mike Desermo checks every one of Brian Maggard's boxes. Um, he's, he's a guy who's going to do it. He's going to do it with class. He's got um, a great relationship with student athletes. He's going to push them all to make sure that they get a degree. Um, he's going to be, uh, he is someone who is a very good recruiter, a very good motivator. Uh, like I said, he checks every box that Brian Maggard had, and he's got a great moral compass as well. So I, um, it, it, I think that there are going to be some people taken by surprise uh, with this hire, but those are going to be the people that don't understand that we've never had a coaching search like this before because we've never hired a coach that didn't have to fix something. And that's the beautiful part about this. Jay Walker joining us on the line, those of you joining us a few minutes late, is that the Rage and Cajuns here don't have to fix anything. They can continue. As Mark said, the continuity is still there. And that helps going into the New Orleans Bowl. Dr. Brian Maggard said a little while ago the coaching staff will be shorthanded because some of the coaches have already left to join Billy Napier in Florida. But the fact that Des will be coaching the Cajuns against Marshall in the New Orleans Bowl has to be a huge help going into that contest. How much pressure is on Des in that game, in his first appearance, a bowl game no less? Uh, you know, from the outside, there's going to be some. I think for Mike, any pressure is going to be self-induced. But Mike's a confident guy. Um, if Mike didn't think that he was the right man for the job, he wouldn't have accepted it. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, it, they are going to be shorthanded. Um, Javar Jaluk, the running backs coach. Mark Hockey, strength and conditioning. Patrick Tony, the defensive coordinator, are all headed to Gainesville. Uh, and, you know, Mike is going to have to um, go ahead and, and think about putting together a staff and decide. But let's remember something. The structure at UL, you've got these coaches, but you also have a whole bunch of guys that Billy hired to be analysts and support staff. And those guys can pick up some of that slack. So I don't think it's quite as panicky as some people are going to think the fact that you've lost these coaches. Now they're very good coaches and they're going to be hard to replace, but you're still going to have plenty of personnel to help get you ready for that game in New Orleans against Marshall. That's the beauty. You have some built in, uh, some built in hires there to fill those gaps, as you mentioned. So the Cajuns truly can pick up where they left off if they decide to go with those analysts. We have about 30 seconds left. I want to switch gears and ask you about Saturday. The environment at Cajun Field, 31,000-plus in the stands. Uh, it was electric to be, as Mr. Bitter would say, one of the people, to be in the <laughs> crowd. You were in the press box, and you got to see it from on high. What was it like for you in the broadcast booth, A, to see that crowd, B, to see their reaction when the game went final, but also C, for you personally, as you mentioned, you've been with the team for a long time. What was it like for you to be part of that victory? Well, first of all, it was loud. You know, it, it, it's so wonderful to do a game where there's tons of crowd noise and it's for the good guys, okay? That part of it was terrific. Um, it, was, it was great to see the passion and the happiness of the fans going onto the field when the game is over. And, and, you know, it's the first time in 53 years that the Cajuns have won an outright conference championship. I've never experienced that before. And then trust me, uh, you know, I'm just the guy who does the radio broadcast, but I got to tell you, it sure felt good after the game. We had a great big uh, group hug up in the uh, booth with uh, with Craig and Gerald and Cody, and um, it was uh, just a wonderful feeling to leave the stadium knowing that the fans of Acadiana are champions of the Sun Belt Conference at long last. Amen to that, brother. Amen. Jay and, Walker, the voice and, of the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Mark, we got 10 seconds. Yeah, that was it, Jay. No, you're not just a guy on the radio. You are the voice of the Raging Cajuns. That's just a guy on the radio. But by the book, by the boom. Uh, thanks, for, th thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jay. We appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple weeks at the New Orleans Bowl. Jay Walker joining us on Acadiana's Morning News. We'll pause for a break. We'll come back and wrap things up after this. It's 851.